Today, we're gonna to talk about why you should use a recruiter to find that next software job. Learning to code can be stressful and hard, and that's why I was proud to write the book, Breaking the Code, that gives you those five essential steps to landing that first software job. Pick up your copy today at Amazon or any other major outlet. Hey, so we know it can be tough finding a technical software job in today's climate, and you may not be finding the results that you want. You've applied a lot of places, but you're just not getting callbacks and even opportunity to interview. What I wanna tell you is you should be working with a technical recruiter. Now I know there's a lot of horror stories about technical recruiters that they don't know what they're doing. Um, they don't present you in the correct way. And I want you to put all those fears aside. I need you to understand this and let me be clear you need to be working with a technical recruiter right now. So you may be asking yourself the question, why do I need to work with a recruiter? I've heard all these stories that it's bad for me. I think the number one reason why you work with recruiters is because they are the best way for you to find a technical job in the market, period. What some of the myths are is that they take money from you or that it costs a fee. And I want you to understand that working with a technical recruiter is a free service to you. It doesn't cost you any money out of pocket. In fact, if someone wants you to pay them to find a job, that is a scam you should run elsewhere. The most reputable companies out there today are all paid by the employer. So the employer typically pays 20% of the first year of your annual salary in order for that recruiter to present candidates to them. And they pick from that lot and the re recruiting firm gets paid by the company. Now you're probably thinking, hey, wait a second, if I call directly and that fee is say $20,000, wouldn't they just give me the $20,000? And the answer is no. You're not getting paid less because the company is using a recruiting firm. You're getting paid whatever you're slotted for for that company. And so the company has a salary slot or salary range for the position they're opening for. And the fee is from a different place in the budget. And so they look at the fee as a service they're paying. Now, the second thing that you may not know about is the hidden job market. The recruiters are actually calling into the companies on a daily basis, which means when a job comes open, Many times the company won't even list that on a job board. And then the only person that knows about the job is the recruiter working on the position. And you may ask yourself, why do they do that? Well, it costs money, number one, to push a, a, an ad out to say Indeed, but that's not really the big deal. It's the big deal of it is, is once I push that ad, I start getting resumes in and I got to filter through all these resumes. And if you've ever posted a job at Indeed or Monster or something like that, a lot of times the resumes come back and they're not a complete match for your position. So you, you're wading through all these resumes trying to figure out who's good, who's not. And the recruiter can give you five to six tailored resumes on your desk so that you can look at the people that are exact fits for your job and then you can get to interviewing right away. So it saves the employer a lot of time, frustration and headache by just calling the recruiter and saying, hey, just go find me a .NET person to fill my, my mid-level or my senior level role that I have open. And then boom, they turn around, they said, what do you think of these candidates? And they discuss the candidates' resumes, their backgrounds and their portfolios. And then the recruiter typically has um, one that they've talked to that they like more than others. And they'll say, well, look at, you know, Johnny or Sally here and they're a good fit for your role. And then they just interview them. And so those jobs never get posted at Indeed or Monster or Dice or anything like that. And so those are hidden jobs that you will never see if you don't work with a recruiter. Imagine if you find the job posted, okay? And they did post the job and you're applying for that job and you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna apply for this job and get it because I'm a perfect match for that. Well, what you don't understand is that the recruiter is also working those as well. And some companies will post the job and work through the recruiting firm. But typically by the time you see the job post, the recruiters probably are identified five candidates and the employer's already interviewing. So in the case of you seeing the job post, you think it's open, but they're already well on in the interview process. So for you to get in there in the first top of the stack interview process, you need to be working through a recruiter. Please subscribe and like the video and also hit the notification bell to get notified of all of our future great content. Now, the other thing that you need to understand about recruiters is that recruiters also have the business relationship. 
So let's say that a recruiter calls you on the phone and says, man, I've got a great .NET job for you. And it's at company ABC. And I think you're a perfect fit. And you and your ultimate wisdom say, you know what? I'm not really interested. And then you try to call that company directly because you believe the myths. I'm going to make more money if I do it on my own, or I'm going to have a better chance to get this if I do it on my own. I can't rely on that recruiter to represent me. And so you try to call in layer direct. What you need to understand is the recruiter has the business relationship, which means they can direct dial the, the hiring manager. And then you, as just a random person looking for a job, direct dials the hiring manager. Typically, you're going to get pushed straight to voicemail and they're not going to take calls from candidates. Or if you do happen to catch them, they do pick up the phone. Typically, they'll say, um, what I need you to do is fill out an application, go through our HR process, and um, I'll talk to you once you go through all that. And so you jump around through all of those hoops. Meanwhile, the recruiter has already been presenting the, um, the hiring manager resumes because they have the relationship. When they call, the hiring manager typically picks up or calls them back because they've been they've done 10 or 20 deals together. They know each other. They've had lunch together and there's a relationship there. Second, there's the power dynamic between a business to business relationship and an employee, a potential employee and an employer relationship. And that person may not want to talk to employees directly until they're ready to interview them. So therefore, they don't talk to them directly on the phone on an unsolicited phone call. They have to wait till you get an interview. The other thing that you're way underestimating is this. Recruiters typically are professional salespeople. So even if you caught in directly, you're going head to head with that professional salesperson and they're going to recommend their five candidates over anybody that's calling. Good, bad or unfair or whatever you want to think about it, they will be able to sway that employer to say that their candidate is better than you because you're not being repped by the recruiter. And you can say that's unethical. You can say that whatever you want to say, that is the way it is. They are professional salespeople and that's what they do. And so you have to not only get the direct dial number, but also beat out the recruiting firm as they outsell you. So you may be asking yourself the question, okay, Bobby, I believe you. How do I get a recruiter to work with me? All right, the first thing you need to do is you need to have a professional, completely filled out LinkedIn profile. This profile allows you to be visible to all these recruiting firms. So if they happen to come across you some other way and you don't have a LinkedIn profile, they're probably not going to represent you that um, easily because they feel like you're not serious about your job search. Remember, they are getting paid a fee when you get a job. And so they only want to rep people that seem serious about finding a job so that they can get paid. This is a business relationship between you, the job seeker, and then the job finder. And so your LinkedIn profile must be on point. The second thing you can do to um, work, to get a recruiter to work with you, especially the top notch firms, is have a great portfolio. Now this portfolio serves a couple of purposes. Number one, you can use it during the interview process, but it gives the recruiter something to sell in that when they call that employer instead of just the resume. So if you, if you have a LinkedIn portfolio, a resume and a portfolio that gives you that leg up when they do those um, resume presentations to that employer and say, hey, look at this guy, he's got a portfolio of projects and I checked it out and I talked to him and he, he's super interested in the job. And so give them something to sell. So when you're talking to a recruiter, make sure that they understand that you have a really rock star portfolio. Now you may ask the question, Bobby, I don't have a portfolio. That's what Coder Foundry does. At CoderFoundry.com, we teach people to how to code, but during that bootcamp process, we're going to build a rock star portfolio that you can show recruiters and employers during the interview process. So if you're interested in learning how to code and would like to come to Coder Foundry, go to coderfoundry.com apply. Well, anyway, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.